Well, in the name of NCGR, we welcome everybody to be here to have our first international webinar with Julia Weiss, Weiss that many of you know her. She's very well-known astrologist. She's going to talk to us about something very new, well, at least for most of us, that is the galactic astrology markets of essential connection to stars. Uh, she has been working with astrology for seven years, like in a professional way, and she's Ireland International NCR Delegate, and we have the pleasure to have her with us today. Uh, thank you very much, Julia, and please keep your questions at the end, so Julia will answer the question when she finishes her presentation. Uh, thank you, Julia, to be with us and for waiting for us. It's all yours. Thank you, Monica, and thank you everyone for your patience with logging into this presentation. I'm so glad that we can start now. Happy Good Friday. Uh, I am going to talk about galactic astrology markers of, for ancestral connections to stars. I, before I do, for those that are not familiar uh, with my work, sorry, let me just change the view here. For those who are not familiar with my work, I have started working with galactic astrology in this room. You know, I'm aware of uh, people that um, have heard my story many times before. And in each of my presentations, I like to bring in something new that I didn't share before. So they always find something new <laughs> that, that they're learning. So um I started working as quantum soul, uh, sorry, uh, quantum healing hypnosis regression, Dolores Cannon's technique in this very room in beautiful South County Wicklow on the East Coast of Ireland. So for seven years, I would welcome people into this room. The client would sit here, I would sit here. And first, for several hours, that would tell me everything about their life story, their connections to their um, siblings, parents, grandparents, their family history. It was a very long interview, as Dolores Cannon taught us the importance of exploring all this and allowing people to kind of find clarity in what they are sharing and what they what their intention is for the regression hypnosis session. They always came usually with the intention to heal some unresolved issue related to their childhood or family, some patterns that kept repeating, and they just wanted to see what is the cause, how can they change and improve their life. And um, many, most of them, there was like the ever-present question for every client, what's the purpose of my life? They wanted to go within into deep hypnotic state where they can access higher states of consciousness and find answers from within their own being rather than from me as a practitioner telling them what's best for them. So, uh, you know, after observing people's um, kind of conscious mind, then taking them under through this um, hypnotic uh, regression experience, help them to access higher states of consciousness you know, moving from the everyday beta brainwave state, logical, analytical to somewhat relaxed state um, to alpha brainwave state to theta and gamma, where they can access higher states of consciousness, unlock deeply embedded memories from within their own DNA, connect to ancestral stories, emotional trauma, but also amazing, profound guidance that Dolores Cannon called it the higher self connection, the part of us that knows all the answers and knows our purpose, our journey and all that. So I had this privilege for seven years to, uh, to kind of study human experience and witness people regressing to past lives of their own, regressing to ancestral lives, regressing also to lives that seem to be not earthly elsewhere, other star systems and journeying through cosmos and tapping to just fascinating, fascinating information. And after their session, I then took time to um, look at their astrology because I asked every client for their birth details. Many didn't know their time of birth, but it's okay. I was able to get a lot of information even without it. So I would look for proof and validation to what they were saying, what the experience in their life, I was looking for that in astrology. I was an avid student of astrology since my, since my teenage years uh, through uh, books that I had access to. Uh, always used it for my own 
personal development and understanding my immediate environment, my family, my friends. But this, you know, when I started doing the QHHT therapy, I started exploring astrology really intensely. And uh, I, I learned it or deepened my knowledge the other way around rather than um, reading about delineations presented by ancient astrologers. This time I was looking first at people's life experience and then finding that inside the natal chart. And of course, it's all there. Astrology is truly fascinating. Everything is in it. And I really feel and see the natal astrological chart as a quantum map to our soul's journey, not just this incarnation, but all the other incarnations, including ancestors. There's just so much there. The word quantum is so perfect because it really um, opens or responds and opens based on the awareness and uh, readiness of the astrologer, of the person that is viewing the, all the symbols, whatever you're ready to see, you, you're um, kind of your own consciousness uh, unlocks deeper and deeper and deeper layers of astrological chart. So as people journeyed through these, this quantum uh, field of Akashic records through their own DNA, uh, soul memory, through their physical human uh, DNA memory, this is um, an image that beautifully represents what I have witnessed um, through my client's experience, that we are connected to beings from stars of all shapes and forms, of all time, uh, kinds of frequencies. And we really, I innately, wholeheartedly believe that we are connected to stars and not just through um, our soul records, our soul memory, soul DNA, soul experience, but also physically through our physical human DNA. For those who are not aware, there has been extensive study done on human DNA, uh, over 13 years long effort of, of scientists who were kind of trying to decode um, the messages inside our DNA. And they came to conclusion that our human DNA has been altered by something that cannot be described as natural evolution. And they believe that we have codes um, and information within our DNA that is linked to extraterrestrial DNA. And there are endless artifacts throughout the earth, including you may have heard of the elongated skulls that are found all over Peru. Well, recently only was confirmed that these skulls, um, DNAs, mitochondria is uh, containing um, information that is not found in any human, known human or animal uh, DNA. So again, they kind of confirmed or came to conclusion that these are of extraterrestrial uh, origins and, you know, plenty other evidence throughout the earth that there has been beings from, um, you know, advanced races uh, kind of exploring the experience here on earth as well and i certainly have seen it through the uh, records and um, regressions of, uh, of my own clients so this is a really nice short video just showing how what i believe is true how you know when a civilization reaches a certain level of their uh, development uh, where they expand technologically spiritually scientifically and uh, when they start reaching to other star systems, even if you look at the echo of that story in our own civilization, we are now aiming to colonize uh, other places. We are looking at exoplanets and possible worlds where we could um, survive. So there are civilizations that are way, way ahead of us who have already done this. So galactic astrology, can help us explore the journey that is um, embedded in our own natal chart. I really, really believe that based on um, the huge amount of data that I've reviewed. And for people who don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that there is extraterrestrial life out there, or people who don't necessarily align with the idea of soul reincarnating and uh, consciousness continuing on, uh, through multiple experiences, I 
like you to perhaps uh, work with this information as um, as soul memories that belong to all that is this great consciousness. We are all part of the great ocean of infinite intelligence, the consciousness, the all that is. And if you zoom in on yourself as a drop that belongs to the ocean, you can either just feel into it and receive all the information that you need through your inner senses, or if you're wired a certain way uh, where you have that strong analytical, logical researcher kind of, um, you know, constellation within your being, then you want to use galactic astrology or um, any other amazing systems out there to help you understand what part of the ocean are you part of what are the qualities in the part of the um, river or lake where your drop comes from you know what what is the environment like and i believe through galactic astrology we can study that and we can gain a really beautiful understanding of our own unique expression of source so i'll just uh, read this here our universe is holographic Macrocosm is reflected in microcosm and vice versa. Every single one of us is a unique fractal, yet a complete hologram of the whole. We either perceive ourselves as a unique fractal through our ego's filter or as a complete hologram of the whole if we expand our consciousness by switching to theta or gamma brainwave state, a state as I mentioned before. Our DNA stores the full story of creation, including memories of previous generations. Astrology can help us understand which behavioral patterns anchored in ancestral trauma are we here to resolve and which archetypes are helping us to evolve. And galactic astrology can expand uh, this perspective to include our ancestors from the stars. Okay. And what I also uh, learned through this journey uh, that I've been on is that there is something I believe called is called quantum entanglement, where when we have a soul that also incarnated in another star system, for example, Pleiades or Arcturus or Sirius, in order for that soul to incarnate in physical reality here on Earth, it is important for the celestial bodies in our solar system to be in kind of geometrical pattern alignment with the star that the soul is coming from. So it is, so there is a kind of geometrical, mathematical um, orchestration that is enabling the connection, the contact communication um, with the soul memories uh, coming to that from that star system. And um, of course, if we think about ever leaving uh, this planet and traveling to space, what happens to astrology then? Well, that's what quantum entanglement uh, can do, where you can connect anywhere and everywhere through frequency of love. And that is something that I've witnessed so many times during the QHHD sessions, when, when the client remembered the immense love they felt an experience in any of the star system, the family, uh, soul family that they connected with, they suddenly remembered all the other uh, details. It's the love that was always, uh, the, the stronger love they allowed themselves to feel um, to certain star system and, and their family there, more memories they were able to recall. Like there is an emotional bond between us. Love is the guiding principle. I believe in our in our universe. So here is just uh, another photo that I've never shared from kind of behind the scenes. So I would have you know uh, almost two thousand now um, records of one page, just little handwriting of all the notes from the interview of my client's life story, and then the regression, whatever journey they've been on, and then on the other side, I would have manually calculated. Uh, the stars alignment and then color coded them and this is something that I then started teaching people I put it in the course and I prayed for for um, 
software developer that could help me put this in an automated system. And within two weeks after I published my first course on galactic astrology, someone like that did email me. His name is Hector Manares, and he helped me build a website that is doing all the calculations within a matter of seconds before I would spend hours and hours um, doing that. So uh, we have created a website that is available to public. If you go to galacticastrochart.com, click on the free reports, and then there is a section another subsection called free report, you can um, you can put in your birth details and receive uh, an information that looks like this, which, which which will show you which star systems that, that I selected for this purpose. Um, there's 64, I believe, currently on the free version um, and more for the practitioners of, of um, the advanced kind of practitioner course. So you can find out what, which star systems were in alignment with planets in our solar system at a time of your birth. And what is unique about this system is that it doesn't show you only conjunctions, like the exact alignments, but also oppositions, trines, sextiles, and squares. And I'll talk about that later, because I believe I learned through experience that they too matter. And we'll talk about that later. There is another new feature that was added recently where you can also see the star systems aligned on the astro wheel. This is not available on the free version just for the practitioner's course, but I just wanted you to see. So the ascendant here, the left side of a chart is the horizon. When you were born, what was on the sky that visibly, uh, whether day or night, um, when you were born? And then here, the right side descendant um, is the... Um, right, the sunset. Uh, there's another word for it that I can't think of, <laughs> strangely, for now. And then the below of the chart is what is on the other side of the earth at the time you're born. So you can see all this in a chart and get a sense of which star system you feel strongly connected to. There are many people that don't really uh, consciously connect to to this concept or to stars at all. However, there are many people that are always thinking about the fact that they feel like they're not from earth, like they come from somewhere else and they keep looking at the sky. They keep wondering about, you know, their home. It's something they really feel innately very strongly. There are people who spontaneously recall um, memories and visions and emotional experiences from places that they cannot identify as earth. They feel like this is from Orion, or this is from a memory from Pleiades, this is a memory from Sirius. There, there is a huge amount of uh, population on Earth that has direct experience in one way or another with certain star systems. Next four slides, I, I was contemplating whether I should include them or not, because they talk about the traditional astrology, and I decided to keep them in especially for any newbies to astrology, just to demonstrate the potential of how much information you can um, receive, even just from traditional astrology, if we exclude the stars, if we want to look at our ancestral connection. So when you look at your natal chart and you look at the moon and the sun, the two luminaries inside the chart, they um, can be, they're linked to the parents the two um, luminaries of our lives that that are the kind of key elements to our personal development. And especially through the mother, you know, our body was developing inside her body for nine months and our grandmother's body was already carrying the egg of us. Like there are two generations in and the trauma is much stronger, strongly um, um passed down through the mother's lineage for that reason. And especially then trauma pattern seems to be repeating very strongly from our grandparents through the mother's mother, even more so. And I've really observed that through, you know, thousands of people's stories um, over the seven years that it's the way. So if you want to look astrologically at the placement of your moon, sun, the zodiac sign, what is the archetype that they carry, and then translate it when you reflect on your parents, what were they like, you will see that that story actually is in your chart and the manifestation of where these two luminaries are placed in your natal chart very much uh, shows up in your 
experience with your parents. So moon typically would represent the mother and sun represent the father. However, we have often a case where mother feels much more um, masculine, outgoing, external, um, you know, taking care of everything in a way a man traditionally would. And oftentimes we have fathers who are more feminine and withdrawn, more um, kind of expressing and embodying the feminine archetype rather. So it's not absolute that moon is the mother and sun is the father. If you think of it more so, the feminine expression within your family dynamic and the masculine expression within your family dynamic. Okay. Same goes for um, archetype of the zodiac signs of Cancer, Capricorn, Cancer linked to the feminine, Capricorn to the masculine ancestral lineage. And also same goes for the fourth house astrologically. And I'll show you more uh, with other uh, slides where you can visually see this. And 10th house representing uh, the father often. I just included a note here that Vedic astrologers that use um, sidereal uh, zodiac, they um, consider the ninth house linked to the father. And interestingly, if I looked at clients who had issues with the father, where the father was absent, or there was some really difficult, challenging relationship with the father, usually they would have either lunar nodes in the ninth house, or um, Saturn, Pluto, Chiron located in the ninth house. So, you know, there is something to it too. And also, if you review the lunar nodes patterns um, in your chart. So what I invite you to do after this presentation is take time to, to look at your natal chart. Uh, there is astrological software freely available through multiple websites. So if you go to our website, galacticastrochart.com, uh, look at your natal chart, then open the chart of your mother, chart of your father and their parents and start looking for patterns. And you will notice that there is repetition, that there is um, a theme that runs through the family with the exceptions where one person comes with completely different energy and that person will feel like the odd one out. And if, if that's you, you know, then you kind of receive a validation to why you felt like you can't fit into your family, why you kind of stand out. Um why there is maybe conflict everyone else is kind of similar but you're different it it can be very healing and reassuring when you find validation of something like that in astrology okay and if you want to look at the trauma um, clues in your astrology it's important to look at placements of saturn pluto chiron lunar nodes lilith and their hard aspect to any of the luminaries like i said moon sun uh, their placement in Cancer Capricorn, their placements in 4th house or 10th house, and in particular aspects that are square, opposite, or if you have incompatible planets um, conjunctions, like for example, Mars conjunct Neptune, they, they don't really work well together. So there is usually uh, an indication of, of um, some trauma or challenges. So uh, it's okay, you know, it's a lot of information. And if you're new to astrology, this all may be just going through your head. But the reason why I'm bringing it here is to just um, let you know that there is a huge amount of very valuable information that can be found in astrology. And if you feel maybe stuck in your life, or if you're really unsure about where you're heading or how the previous generations are influencing you, because a lot of it is very unconscious. And we are not fully aware of these patterns that we inherited, um, you know, by observing the behavior of our parents, grandparents, and so on. Having an astrological reading done by someone experienced who is focused on this can be completely uh, transformational. You suddenly are aware, and as a result, you start dissolving the patterns and uh, create choices that are that feel aligned with your highest soul potential. And especially this current era that we live in there is a note here at the bottom since 2008 to this year pluto uh, was transiting capricorn it's a generational planet with a very slow slow movement and it was also opposing uh, sign of cancer 
So there was a lot of ancestral healing that that was occurring collectively. And I personally, wherever I look, there, you know, ancestral healing is is happening on in so many different groups or individuals. Like that conversation is very hot on the topic if if you know where to look for. So it's wonderful to see that, and I'm so glad that um, this call is happening where we can continue um, sharing experience and help each other. You can uh, take a screenshot of any of these slides that I'm showing you. For any newbies who are not really familiar with, um, with the concept of 12 astro houses, this can come really helpful. And remember, I mentioned the fourth house. You know, if you have planets placed there, it can tell you more about your family history and how you connect to your ancestors. So focus there. And then the, in opposition to that, we have tent house, which can represent that kind of outgoing masculine um, blueprinting within your family lineage. And how is that influencing you? So you can use that. And this is another slide that can come really handy where you can dive deeper into understanding of your family dynamic if you consider planetary rulers. <laughs> um, again, the, the whole presentation could be done on this. What I've decided to do today is to uh, open a lesson to public, um, to public in my course that talks about this um, rulership and everything is explained in great detail. And if you just focus on the fourth house, uh, if you copy this link, and when I send a replay of this presentation, I'll include this link so you can find this lesson easily, really valuable information that'll help you understand how you were conditioned by your immediate family environment and by your ancestors by simply understanding the planetary rulership. Okay, so I kind of want to just skip through these slides and focus on the galactic aspect where we can bring the stars into the equation. Just to quickly uh, demonstrate what I was talking about in the previous slide, I forgot I had this slide here. So the fourth house for this person, the beginning of that house, always from the left to the right, is sitting in Aries. We could say, astrologically, we would say the, the cusp of the fourth house is in Aries. If you look back here, Aries here is ruled by Mars. So a ruler of the fourth house for this person is Mars. And where is Mars in this chart? This is the icon for a uh, symbol for Mars. Mars is in the second house. So what we are talking about here is the ruler of the fourth house is in the second house. So there is the energies are moving between these two different life areas. So this person in particular was influenced by um, kind of Martian energy um, present in their family environment. And it was strongly um, influencing the personal values of this person's psyche and, you know, what they what they think about, what they like, what is important for them was influenced strongly by the family dynamic. And um, if we have moon here representing mother in Gemini, there was a strong communication. The son is in, um, and always busy. The, the mother always had um, things going on, not really present and available because uh, Geminis are always uh, focusing on five different projects at the same time. And father, represented by the son here, in Aquarius, somewhat detached and not really present. This person... Um, lost father due to divorce so it was kind of absent from early on and this is uh, and Chiron the wounded um, the biggest wound for this person is in the fourth house so this person was um, strongly affected by the emotional wounding that was occurring within the family dynamic uh, the conversation or the communication in the house was very fiery um, and strong whereas this person was actually quite sensitive so that's one example. Another example here, fourth house at 29 degrees of Cancer. So um, the home family um, area is ruled by the sign of Cancer. And if you look here and find Cancer is actually ruled by Moon. So uh, the ruler of the fourth house for this person is in the first house. So the 
the kind of personal um, uh, identity, the first impression uh, this person makes in the world and uh, kind of the sense of self was strongly influenced by the mother who's also moon in Gemini, uh, always busy, uh, great communicator. And um, the father, son would be here in Aries in the 11th house, which is um, associated also with um, Aquarius and being um, somewhat detached and not present. Uh, there was also divorced for this person, divorce for this person, but it didn't really affect um, um, the the personality as much as when you have Chiron in the fourth house. There is actually part of fortune here in this fourth house, and the relationships, uh, family relationships, family dynamic is very easygoing smooth there's no drama or or toxic communication or anything like that when you have kind of empty house it's um you're not really um constantly enmeshed in other people's relationships in contrast if you would look at someone who has fourth house packed with planets especially mars pluto saturn uranus uh, sometimes you have a whole cluster stellium of um, planets in a house and if we would listen to the stories of these individuals, they would have a very um, busy and active immediate family environment where everyone uh, is involved with everyone. There is drama, there is pain, there is all kinds of uh, situations. And usually that person feels like they're here to clear the whole family lineage of trauma and really help um, to end the cycle of trauma and not pass it down to further generations. So something like that can tell you a lot. All right. Um, if we bring the galactic astrology into the picture, I we can look at a completely different patterning of how we view the chart. With the software that we developed, you see there is, you, you don't see the wheel with the 12 houses. You see the planets, from sun, moon, down through the planets, all the way to Pluto. Uh, so from sun down to Pluto, uh, you can see which zodiac signs they're in, how many degrees of the zodiac, and which of the 12 houses uh, the planets are positioned in. And then you have the information calculated alignments to the star systems that we selected in our in our software so you can see the conjunct oppositions trine sextile square alignments here it can be very overwhelming but you know there are people who take great joy in studying something like that it really you know there are people that thrive uh sitting for hours looking at a huge amount of data of this type and they they're able to read it they're able to tune into it and they're it, they they become really excited when they find clues to something that makes sense, something they can apply. So if that's you, this is for you. But then there are also people where they feel almost frightened by something something like this, and they're uh, much more suitable for um, intuitive, creative, reflective type of way where you just more uh, receive the information from within your own being. Um, and neither path is better than the other. You know, we are just all wired differently. So if you're like me, you know, this is fun. <laughs> so looking at, um, I invite you to go to our website and get this type of report for your natal chart, get your parents one the charts and your grandparents, have them side by side. And then if you're on a computer, use control F feature for finding a word and then focus any on any of the star system that um, that you're drawn to the most to start with. If we were only considering the conjunct alignments, which I learned that most, um, if not all ancient astrologers, they were, they were considering conjunctions only. I'm, I'm not um, aware of of ancient astrologers looking at oppositions, trines, sextiles, or, squ or squares. I didn't come across that yet. But, you know, if I only looked at, at conjunctions, I would have missed the thread of, of connection that runs through the family. 
there are exceptions. There are families, and I'll show an example of that in later slides, where there is a star system that is conjunct through multiple generations, and it's an obvious, very strong link um, to, to the frequency of that star system. But in many cases, there are conjunctions, but there are oppositions, trine sextiles, and squares, and each will reveal a story, as I'll show in, in further slides. So you'll be surprised to see how there are multiple star systems repeating throughout multiple generations in your lineage, if you can do something like that, if you have access to your genealogy. So this is a picture of what you will find on the website. You will have to put in your details when you go to the free chart. Um, if you don't use the Placidus house system, which is default on free version, you can edit this part here and put in the information based on whatever star system you want to use. Experienced astrologers will know what I mean by this. And then you can generate basic report, extended report. And if you, you have to click show trine sextile square in order to see the other alignments, otherwise you will just see the conjunctions, okay? So this is an example of a person that was able to track seven generations of Antares Aldebaran alignment. These are two of the four royal stars, very potent um, star frequency, great leadership, high intelligence, resourcefulness, um, strategic planning. Uh, Aldebaran is connected to frequency of Archangel Michael, kind of divine protector, guardian. Antares is connected to Archangel Uriel. There is just so much information through this um, star system alone. And if you see here, conjunctions for seven generations, uh, ending there with grandson who has trine sextiles, Antares and Aldebaran. So um, this is the only one that I've seen so far that has full-on conjunctions through many generations. Really, really powerful. If you find something like that in your lineage, you need to explore that star system, learn as much as you can about it. There is so much information available now online, freely, plenty on my YouTube channel, on many different star systems, what it means when they um, are present in your natal astrology, um, you know, how they manifest and all that. So uh, enjoy <laughs> that rabbit hole and see where it takes you. Um, and so here, um, kind of just repeating what I said, that you will find that there's multiple star systems uh, present. And in fact, I'm going to skip this slide because I kind of just said that. And then the next example is what that slide was talking about. This is from my own chart, connection to Pleiades through my mother's lineage. Pleiades star system is not present at all in my father's lineage. Multiple generations charts that I had access to, zero Pleiades, but through my mother, Pleiades uh, throughout. And when I took a DNA test, Many years ago, I wanted to know if I have any DNA uh, link to Ireland because I really feel like home here, but I don't. But uh, if we look at the astrocartography, I have Jupiter line running where I live and Jupiter is the biggest blessing in, in my own chart in my natal astrology. So I just feel really, really good and blessed here. Um, so no DNA in Ireland. However, there is a Nordic uh, lineage, which may give me the blue eyes and uh, blondish hair. Uh, that runs through my mother's line. My father would be dark hair and uh, that Nordic DNA is just not there. My father's lineage goes down south. My mother's lineage goes north. And I thought that was just so interesting to see that validation through galactic astrology, to see the Pleiades running throughout that lineage. So let's look at the aspects and what information they can reveal to you. My great-grandmother had... Aquarius, Venus, square Pleiades, and her Venus was also square lunar nodes. This would tell me that there was some trauma in relation to Venusian archetype Aquarius. So perhaps this is a presumption, but then when I spoke to my mom, there was a validation where the mother had a challenging time to express her emotional side to communicate what she really felt like, what was important to her heart, what she was passionate about. She was 
of generation that was in service to others and prioritizing other people's needs. She was mother first and foremost. And uh, there was like inner tension where her inner heart was not communicated, was not expressed. My grandmother took on that frequency or came in on a soul level. There is a match from your soul's trauma. You, you choose a family that is a frequency match to that trauma frequency. And you kind of clear two things at the same time, your previous past lives and your family, uh, physical human family lineage at the same time. So my grandmother experienced that challenge uh, in communication in the group setting. And still to this day, she suffers social anxiety when it comes to speaking in groups. And her square is experience is placed in the 11th house, Pisces, Mercury. And also her Aquarius sun and moon are in 10th house are squaring Pleiades. So that's where she's experiencing that tension that may be connected to their soul history linked to Pleiades, most likely. I didn't look at the actual soul records, but it would make sense based on other similar stories that I would have experienced. Then my mother came in with a very strong energy and ability to communicate. She broke the pattern, helping to kind of cut that uh, trauma. And she's an excellent communicator and really comes out alive when she speaks publicly, when, you know, as a leader. There is a conjunction to Pleiades. She had that Pleiadian easygoing frequency, well integrated through her son, through her outgoing personality. And then for myself, I have Pleiades on my ascendant and trying my uh, midheaven. So also easy to communicate. And many people would have commented in the past that they sense the Pleiadian frequency coming through. It's on my ascendant those that that are familiar with these with these concepts and then my daughter also there, there are no squares or oppositions the pleiadian frequency will come as a supportive energy in her life helping advance her ascendant helping advance her mc and it's likely coming from my personality from my experience from my presence in her life when you have that sex style it comes as an external support of that star frequency. So here I, cre I created a slide where I explained the aspects to you so you can take a snapshot of it and help you understand how I translate or experience these uh, connections to stars. So when you look at your natal chart report from our website and you will see a star system that is conjunct a planet, normally it means that the frequency of that star system and when you learn about the star through information available online or by going within, you will find that that frequency, uh, the expression of that star system is well integrated and expressed through the planet that is conjuncting that star system. It's easiest noticeable when, when you have star system conjunct the ascendant or Mercury, because it is something that really comes out and it is noticeable. It's something that you show to others or on mid heaven, you know, uh, these are parts of our personality that we express outwardly and it's noticeable by others. So if you have conjunctions on Midheaven, Ascendant or True Mercury, you can really start noticing different flavors of different star systems. If you start paying attention to a variety of different stars through different people. And that's how I kind of learned about all this by observing people, seeing what's in their chart and, be, and noticing the patterns, repetition that, OK, every person that had Sirius on their Ascendant or Midheaven or Mercury, they would speak in a certain way. They have certain manners. Pleiadians would have different manners. The Arcturians would have different manners. It's really fascinating to see how star systems really uh, influence and impact um, how we are and what we experience. Okay, if you have opposition, if you see that in your natal chart, then usually the there are external challenges linked to that star system frequency. They, they keep coming up in your life uh, anchored through the planet that is opposing it. And these external uh, challenges are pushing you to evolve. And these external challenges challenges usually come through people that have that star system conjunct in their chart or through other aspects, but usually with conjunction. So I give you an example. I have um, Aldebaran on my ascendant and Antares on my descendant. And so Antares is opposing my ascendant. It is always, always through people that have 
Antares Aldebaran, because they're always kind of opposing each other just by the one minute there is a difference in opposition. When I meet people that have strong Aldebaran and Antares um, in their chart, they really activate my Antarian uh, side. And uh, it's in those experience through challenges, through the deep conversations that we have, through you know, great friendships. And I attract a lot of people that have this um, Antarian frequency. And that's when I suddenly feel the Antares um, connection strongly in my being and it comes alive. When I'm not in the presence where externally that Antarian uh, frequency is around, I, I don't even know about that Antarian part of me uh, being here. It's like, you know, with conjunction, it's always there, that frequency of the star. But with opposition, it comes and goes, and it's usually activated by external challenges or circumstances that have that frequency. And it's kind of like you learn by looking at the frequency of that star. It's in opposition. You start absorbing it, uh, integrating it, and uh, acknowledging it as part of your being that is needed uh, in, in certain times. When you have star trining a planet, you will recognize the frequency of that star coming alive uh, during key events in your life when you are propelling uh, in your personal evolution, in your development, in your growth. And uh, if you're challenged or just uh, better, um, challenged more so with trying, it's like um, it's a positive experience where, where you feel excited about figuring something out. And you notice that you have these inner resources that that were dormant, but when needed, when that key moment happens, suddenly you are accessing uh, gifts and qualities that if you looked at your soul records, you would see that they can be traced back, whether through your own soul memory connected to that star system or through your ancestors. The trine is really uh, strongly felt as ancestral gift. So you can really feel the ancestral lineage, let's say from Pleiades, you have a trine in your fourth house to Pleiades. It's like, oh, you have ancestral gifts and qualities coming from the Pleiadian connection that you can access from within your own being. It's in your DNA, all right? It's internal. The sextile to, to fixed star usually comes uh, again externally, but as a supportive energy. I would often see sextiles, let's say, to Arcturus, and that person, these people would experience Ar Arcturian spirit guides. They'll be like, oh, for sure, for sure, I have Arcturian spirit guides, or Psychic told me I have this Arcturian spirit guide. That's how I started noticing the sextile comes as external blessing gift. And I feel it's like a positive karma, like we, all, we earned it most likely, or through our ancestors. It's like a um, thank you from the universe for something that you have done or your ancestors have done down the line. And now you can reap the benefits of your good deeds and, uh, you know, having that sextile exactly when you need it, blessing comes. And that blessing usually has the frequency of that star system that is sextile through the planet and the placement in your chart. It, it can be very particular and very obvious, like, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a great connection. If you look at the ancestral uh, concept here, when you have these six styles, um, it it's a it's traced frequency of that star system in your lineage, but you don't feel it um, that you're accessing it from inside your being when you need it. It feels more like you feel the presence of your ancestors that hold that frequency that almost like whisper to your ear or you feel it like an external spiritual guidance coming through your ancestors, your star um, ancestors. That's kind of the difference between the trine and sextile in terms of the stars. And then the square causes the inner conflict between you kind of having um, an innate desire to express the pure frequency of that star system, but the placement of that square through the planet and through the life area based on the 12th um, house wheel, it, it's uh, very incompatible with the environment where that square is. Like if you had Arcturus, Arcturus square, um, Mercury in third house, you want to honor the Arcturian connection of being spiritual or highly kind of scientific and very 
you know, evolved, um, beautiful, compassionate being, but in your third, ho third house, the immediate environment, your friendships in school environment, they would not get that. You will feel odd with that environment. So the square is then challenging you to figure out a way how you can um, gracefully express that frequency in a way that is not triggering the others that feel very different to what you hold, what you have. You have to find some resolution between um, two different frequencies. I always think of two roommates that are com come from completely different worlds, but they have to find a way to live together peacefully. So when you have these squares to pick stars, that's the challenge. You want to somehow embrace it, even though it feels odd. And there is usually a connection to um, either misuse of something in connection to that star system, or you were mistreated uh, in connection to the star system and another incarnation or your ancestors. So there is some unresolved emotional uh, trauma that caused kind of inner conflict that is calling for resolution in this lifetime. So there is a huge amount of information that you can find in your natal chart and looking at the patterns in your family history where you realize, oh, wow, there is more to it. So another example here. Through my lineage, if I look at the Lyran connections, my great-grandfather would have had um, his Aries, Mars, and Mercury square Lyra. Then the grandfather, his son, would have would come with Mars and Jupiter conjunction um, and conjunct Lyra, Neptune trine Lyra. So, so the trauma that was with my great-grandfather, the conflict of Lyra, that he was experiencing internally through his Mars in Aries and Mercury in Aries. There was, um, from the stories that I've heard from my mother, he was a type of person that was a doer, um, carer, protector. He was he would do everything for everyone. And that's something that Lyran... Um, star seeds have in common there is this um kind of divine leadership and taking care of things and nurturing of others and protecting others that was taken to the extreme in many cases where you deny your own physical body's needs um wishes and desires um so he had this strong energy inside his being looking at all the other placements as well he would do so much for everyone um, but almost to the point of resentment. And he, he did pass away young of a heart attack. Um, I think he was 36 only. So there must have been overdoing everything for everyone um, to the point where his body couldn't take it anymore. His son then um, had a better boundaries in that regard. Uh, my mother's father and uh, the story, um, the perhaps he learned from the from witnessing his father's um, shortcomings, and uh, came doing things differently. My mother, all good there too, trying sex styles uh, to Lyra, and now I have Aries Mars square Lyra, and it's sitting in my twelfth house. So. I have to reflect on me experiencing inner conflict with uh, Aries, passionate Mars, doing things to support um, collective, to uh, kind of uplift the collective suffering. Because if my Mars is 12, uh, placed in the 12th house, connected with a collective subconscious, and it's something I do for a living, um, working with that. But I cannot do it to the detriment of my own well-being, of um, which is something that life really taught me hard last year. And I feel I'm doing much better. I'm in much, much better balance in this regard. And I did have transits going through uh, that very much, that very placement. So to, as I'm reviewing the patterns in my lineage, I'm able to strongly connect to the soul of my great grandfather. He actually has a lot of star placements there that are also present in my chart, very, very similar charts. And I 
feel, you know, more connected than ever before, because now I understand all that. And I'm trying to reflect on my own uh, conditioning, connecting it to his story, how I, how my body's um, behavioral patterns were shaped, and it's it's becoming easier to resolve these things by having that bigger vision of it. And if I link it to possible uh, incarnations and connections to Lyra and that whole story, just everything makes so much more sense and uh, it can bring great peace. So like great to see then that my daughter doesn't have these squares or oppositions to Lyra and her Mars in Cancer also in 12th house, there is actually trying. So there is a ending of a cycle where that heavy energy is not passed down to her. I'm doing my work. I'm really focused on healing and clearing subconscious patterns, past lives issues, ancestral issues. I really focus on that. My Aries is in Mars in 12th house. I'm passionate about it and it's not passed down to the next generation. So it's this kind of things that you can find out from studying galactic astrology and uh, looking at your chart through this lens for any newbies to these concepts of concept of galactics i wholeheartedly recommend you check out lisa royal hold you can see her name down here in the quarter corner lisa royal hold if you go to amazon or uh, online you will find galactic heritage cards where she has done fabulous job at presenting the unique frequency for various star systems and viewing it from the perspective of the past, present, and future consciousness development of each of these star systems, where she explains what the race, the collective of certain star system was going through in their early stages of consciousness development, what were they like in the present, just, you know, we are always in the now, we are like when you shift to higher awareness, the time is um, very quantum, not linear, like our human brains um, comprehend. And then what was their highest stage of evolution? What did they learn from their l journey across many eons? Um, I find uh, kind of understanding that perspective incredibly helpful. And then when you take it, with you and review every single star system that way including our own human civilization our own collective evolution you will start paying attention or perceiving our deep past our present and where we are heading where is the what is the potential that we are holding and how can you apply it to your own life experience how can you gain that higher perspective that gives you that that shifts from polarity to unity from victimhood to self-empowerment and all that so i highlighted a few of the races that are included in the free report um, so you can again take a snapshot of this slide and start reflecting on these kind of generic themes that we find over and over with people that have these placements in their chart um, i'll go from bottom up, the Pleiades, usually overly positive, um, kind of blind enthusiasm, and they have to find a way to embrace um, or accept different pathways and allowing everyone to evolve in their own time. Pleiadians tend to want to fix everyone and everything and make them be happy and seeing the bright side the way they do, and they struggle witnessing the opposite of that and the older they get the the they learn that you know they cannot force people to change they have to change themselves and so on there, there's all these amazing um archetypes that truly are present when you see them in your galactic astrology there is uh, one more um concept that i've noticed over time as I witness people regressing to different eras in our human history and different locations in our human history, the first one where I started paying attention to this was a client that regressed to South America and had um, amazing, very detailed recall of Mayan. And then I noticed that she had Origa Capella uh, strongly represented throughout her chart, but most of all conjunct her moon. And she later said that her mother um, ancestral lineage traces back to South America. 
So then I started paying attention to this, especially in connection to moon and sun uh, connections. If there are um, any aspects, conjunct, trine, sextile, squares, uh, is there a possibility that there is a connection or fourth house, that there is a connection to an actual DNA lineage going back to some of these um, locations? This is not an absolute truth. There are many variations of this. Every single star system here at this point of our human evolution, there are their DNA is spread all over the globe. But if just reflecting on the lifetimes recalls from previous um, eras, you know, people who have strong Sirius and Orion in their charts, they recall lifetimes from living in ancient Egypt. Um, people regressing. Um, to India if they have a strong Vega Lyra connection. So it's quite fascinating how how this can also play a role where you know you may feel really drawn to certain culture and you see it here on screen and then you find that star system strong in your chart. it's it can be really beautifully validating and healing and you just feel more whole than you, you felt ever before. There's something really magical about this galactic astrology and just adding, kind of missing puzzle pieces to your whole story. And I want to highlight that I don't want to create further attachments to identities and ego boosts. And I, I say this in every presentation I do. It That's not the purpose of galactic astrology that I intended. Um, you know, what I'm hoping is for you to start feeling more as a citizen of this universe um, and feeling connected to all that is feeling connection to the whole world and the brotherhood, sisterhood with everyone that you encounter with. And uh, just know that we are here to evolve, to heal, to align to greater harmony with the whole universe. Um, so I hope you receive it with your heart rather than with your ego when you start exploring your connections. Okay. And one more thing I wanted to point out is that it tends to be easier for some people to connect with their star family during transits where that star system is in perfect alignment with our sun or moon or Mercury or any of the planets. So we have a free feature on our website. If you go again to free reports and then instead of clicking on the free report, you click on stars degrees and then you put in the year that you're interested in like this year 2024 and our system will recalculate all the stars that are present in the calculator this is actually where you can see what's included and it'll also show you try and sextile squares oppositions um, so it can be really handy to have it in fact i would encourage you to even print this page for you and have it uh, available it can it can come very helpful um, at any given time and of course there are people who can connect to their star soul family at any time because love is the calling card you know if you just go into your heart and with the intention to connect with um you know your soul family whoever is most relevant to come through for you to guide you to support your evolution they you know you will receive in whatever way um, is most appropriate for you so um, i hope that helps there was a really beautiful initiative in the private Facebook group that we have for the students of the Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner course, which is focused on galactic astrology and soul reading To uh, that I would like to share with you too, where you can create a, a visual uh, connection, whatever speaks to you, where you place your photo in the middle and then start adding what whichever star systems from your natal chart and from your family lineage that you feel most strong resonance with and uh, you know there are many visual and creative uh, people in this group it may uh, add more magic to how you start awakening your memories and deepening your connection with your star family you can do this also with crystals with uh, plants, flowers, spirit animals, you know, it's just such a nice idea to um, to playfully, creatively embrace your connections uh, in this world. So that's the end of my presentation, just names of different uh, courses that I have online. Uh, you're more than welcome to explore them. And I believe every course has three preview lessons 
So if you go to either this website, Galactic Astrology or starseedsteachable.com, both will lead to these online courses. And if you scroll through the curriculum, you can see the free preview so you can get a taste of uh, what I'm talking about here. And I have to uh, give a shout out to NCGR organization that is actually um, holding this webinar. There are many people that I've invited here that may not be familiar with this organization. I wholeheartedly encourage you to go to their website, geocosmic.org, and go through the tabs and all the information they have available. They have amazing astrology-based courses uh, where you can become certified as an astrologer and recognized by Professional Astrologers Alliance. So it's really amazing if this is something that is calling you. There is such value in astrology when someone becomes passionate about it and really puts the hours in, uh, the guidance that you can offer to others, it's immense. So, um, you know, that's my jam. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, I would be so happy to, to answer them. Thank you very much for letting us. Very interesting. We have a lot of questions here in the chat box. But I would rather uh, start with a general question because there are some very personal or very yeah, particular questions. So we start with the general questions. We, I think we start with the one that were written in the chat and maybe the one who raised the hand later. It's okay with you. Yeah. You want me to read them or you want them yes, to read? Yes, please. Yeah. Or um, let me see. Okay. Actually, let me let me uh, go through them and. Um, so we start at the top. Uh, Jocelyn, you're saying how there are very rare star races. I'm not sure what you mean by that. You'll need to elaborate on it a little bit. Uh, Lita, fascinating. Do you find the characteristics noted are consistent in channeled communication that have been received? Yes. Yes. And that is such a beautiful uh, experience to have when you see, when, when you notice a pattern and then you find that information externally through someone that channeled it. Um, those are the moments I live for when, when you have a validation like that. Yes. And I also want to say here that, you know, different channelers bring through different frequency and just like earth, if you would want to zoom in on earth as a collective or our solar system as a collective and pinpoint the main theme of what is it like to come from earth or live on earth there are people that have amazing heavenly lives and then there are people here who have who go through hell on earth so that's why i love recommended lisa recommending lisa royal hold because she really drives it home the realization that Every star system, every planet, every civilization has their highs and lows. And you can decide what frequency, what stage of development of their collective consciousness you want to tune in to receive information to support your current experience. Because you can tap into the worst of the worst on Earth and be traumatized forever. Or you can tap into the most amazing experiences on Earth. And there are plenty and, you know, so it's like that with every star system. They have their history, their, their heyday and their doomsday. And um, I like to personally tune to that highest possible wisdom, highest wisdom, highest love to with any star system that I connect with. And that way you can receive something that can help you evolve towards there you always want to aim higher where you are and let it pull you towards higher um, frequency experience you know and there, there would always be people that will be tuning into to difficulties and it's a there is a question mark where there, you know for some people it may be important to review something like that because they need to remember accept heal resolve dissolve the emotions that were trapped somehow within their memory so that then they can move on. But many people don't need to do that anymore. There's been a lot of healing that's been done collectively. And I feel we are getting to a point where it's okay to just become aware of polarity wars and all kinds of things that were occurring throughout this um, galaxy. And, you know, but how can we hold higher perspective filled with love and peace and acceptance and self-empowerment and harmony so that we can kind of help the whole um 
reach higher rather than reliving the old traumas over and over again. So I, I would just watch out for that. Um, I hope that answers your question. Jeremy, what aspects of the astrological chart would indicate foster care and or adoption? My biological mother and I spent time in foster care and we were both adopted. I'm trying to trace my biological mother's story from an astrological viewpoint as I was placed in foster care by her when I was six and never saw her again. And then in 2018 was told she has made her transition to the other side. Oh, bless you, Jeremy. In this case, I would aim for um, highly experienced astrologer who's doing astrology for a couple of decades where they really have uh, a lot of experience under their belt and uh, there will likely be uh, where they can also it's great that you have the six years of age um, pinpoint event where they can look at the progression they can look at various techniques in astrology that can help um bring different puzzle pieces to your story that would likely be uranus you know big changes uh transition saturn pluto chiron it'll all be there i would still look at the fourth house uh, but i would look in particular at the sixth year and that uh, and um, the event chart of of what changed uh before and after there's a lot that can be traced uh, through astrology but you would need a really experienced um head to look at that hope that helps and uh, with the galactic astrology, you know, if you get your natal chart, if you have that available and you look at the at everything that I've shared in this presentation, it will give you a beautiful sense of of the energies in your in your lineage. You know, me just looking at the star placements in my grandparents and great grandparents chart, I was I was able to feel and receive them so much more clearly than ever before. It was amazing. So highly recommend that. See what you get from from that. Oh, but you don't have their you don't have their birth details. Uh, that's the missing link. Then you read it through your own chart and look at the Sun, Moon, uh, fourth house, tenth house, Cancer, Capricorn, and see what you get there. All right, Amelia. Julia's courses are incredibly rich with information. She's very generous with sharing her wisdom. I'm in her Galactic Astrology Practitioner course and have done a couple of other courses there as well. Highly recommended. Thank you so much, Amelia. That means a lot. Thank you. Uh, do you need a birth time for grandparents? She, Shayla is asking a great question. Um, if you have it, great. You will see the placements. But if you don't, you, um, you can put in the 12 noon as the time, but you will have to ignore the house placements. You will have to just not look at the uh, house placements and ignore also the ascendant, midheaven, and sometimes even moon can shift a whole sign and there will be different star uh, placements within the 24 hours. Uh, the login version for the practitioner course students have the option of no houses, so it's really easy to ignore all that. It's just not there. Um, so you will still get 85% of amazing information, even without the time of birth, because a lot of the planets will not move within 24 hours and the placements to stars will be the exact same. So you just focus on sun, really, to be most accurate, because moon will not be reliable reliable in terms of star alignment. So you will get a little bit less. And perhaps, again, working with highly experienced astrologer that can help you uh, figure things out uh, by tracing time. Uh, of everything that you remember. Rare star seeds that you don't see very much. Um, uh, I was told in the galactic reading that I was uh, connected to the angelic realm. What does that mean? Uh, there are certain star placements that we see with people that feel very angelic. You, you know, have you ever met a person that feels like you know, you're an angel on earth. And that person will hear it so many times, like you're an angel, you're an angel, just the way they are, the way they interact. There's this, there, these pure souls um, that are very giving, sometimes almost naive. They, they're they not really, they, they cannot even comprehend the malicious games that some people play. Very kind of pure angelic frequency. And we often see that with the Orion Nebula alignment. It is included in the free report. Orion Nebula, and oftentimes with former heart, uh, one of the four royal stars, people have that. And, and usually it's a combination of the two. 
Um, there, there are these combinations of stars that, you know, we, we are noticing patterning with multiple stars that when they are together, they they mean something. And it keeps being the same way through people that have these um, kind of complex placements. It's like galactic astrology. Harmonics uh, is the new word that came in recently that, uh, that we are starting to notice. So it's quite fascinating. So, yeah, it's um, I would say. You, you most likely have Orion Nebula, I presume, and Fomahod in your chart. And, uh, you know, you may be here to uh, kind of, you're new to the polarity game. It's not easy to be human at all. It's very difficult, very tough. And oftentimes these angelic souls with these placements, they, they're born into very heavy, difficult family dynamics when there's a lot of trauma, um, like heavy duty trauma. And so you want to connect to that beautiful essence of your being and start emanating it from inside out, start healing your DNA and then see the magic happen as you, you know, accept uh, who you are and let the universe uh, work with you. Hope that helps. If you have a strong feeling connection to Andromeda, it seems like there is not as much information about this star connection online. Why is this? I believe there is plenty of information about Andromeda online. It's a very common uh, starseed trait. Even if you go to my uh, YouTube channel, we have beautiful videos about Andromeda and starseeds. Uh, there is multiple stars included in our report on Andromeda. Um, so uh, I let you explore that. If you just look for it, you will find it. Um, and I hope you'll resonate with the information on, on my YouTube channel. Um, Luz Maria, what do you do if you do not know when you were born? If the information of you have of you is just date of birth was lost and you don't have birth dates of your biological parents. Um, that's very challenging. Then you can go down the route of, again, experience astrologer that is specializing in uh chart rectification if you google that word or if someone can type it in chart rectification they can help you determine what is the most likely natal chart for yourself and if you're if you're completely like vague you don't even know the month or day then it'll be extremely challenging and perhaps this is not the path for you i was thinking about this uh before where it's like just records completely lost perhaps astrology route is not necessarily your path of self-discovery there are so many other beautiful and powerful paths that involve uh just going within using different breathing techniques to access higher states of consciousness and just question and inquiry an example um there are many teachers that simply teach you know consciousness uh path path of love, path of peace, and see where that takes you rather than being focused on information and being lost there. You know, I would just surrender to not knowing it and looking for symbols and signs. Let the universe speak to me through what is around me here and now and develop deep relationship with universe itself through life itself rather than being bummed about not having astrology records. I hope that helps. Um, there will be a replay, Debra. There'll be a link. I will certainly send it to all my subscribers. Um, and I believe NCGR YouTube channel will also include it for several weeks on on YouTube, available to public, so you can see the beginning. Uh, Sheila, do you have a list website to find a list of highly recommended astrologers for missing ancestral information? Um, there, if you go to my page, galacticastrology.com, and click on practitioners, there's about 50 practitioners recommended uh, by me who studied galactic astrology soul reading. Many of them have years of experience. They have usually listed additional qualifications where they, they mention that they have done astrology. Even before my courses, I would uh, go to them or just Google natal chart rectification astrology service and you will find websites uh, with people that do that and then just let your heart guide you usually when you look for practitioner you need one where your whole being is expanding and like yes you're excited to connect with them you'll have an amazing session with them if you are booking with someone where you just like you feel nothing then you may be it may be a different type of experience so just let your heart guide you um Leslie, great question. When you mentioned checking the soul records, what are you referring to? Based on my experience, when you 
switch from beta brainwave state, which is logical, analytical, here now, eyes open, and you're dealing with information in front of you in the physical, that's not a brainwave state where you can access something that goes beyond time and space, which Akashic records, soul records, the quantum field of all that is, all the memories uh, of this universe is called quantum field or soul records, whether your own or others. You cannot access it with your normal brainwave state. You have to practice going into uh, altered states of consciousness through breathing techniques. If you go to YouTube and say um, alpha brainwave state or theta brainwave state, breathing technique, like there is a way where you can start training your brain to perceive the quantum where you are, your eyes are closed and your heart expands and you start eventually becoming aware of past, present, and future simultaneously. And you start receiving information based on the inquiry of the focus and intention that you go in with. And there, in my course, I have a whole large module focused on on uh, kind of tapping into those extrasensory um, awareness um, senses in you where you start uh, uh, opening as a channel to receive information from your own soul records and you can use different tools of divination as a temporary crutch or you just start developing your own inner communication with that higher intelligence we all can do it i've seen that you know almost two thousand people doing that through regression but there are many other techniques like meditation breathing and so on that can help you reach that um type of experience so that's what i mean by that some people even in their astrology you will see that they've done it many times in previous lifetimes there are certain star systems that if you have a combination of certain alignments in your chart it's obvious that this person is a born seer psychic like they have multiple star systems that are screaming uh, these you know spiritual psychic abilities and they they're born with it they 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 easily access something like that the information comes to them naturally and it's part of their journey to bring the information to others and for others we have to practice harder and <laughs> get there if, if that's something that's calling us we are all you know fired differently but it's possible and it's tangible you know amelia soul contracts reading based on birth names of family members are another way of seeing the story of family karmic connections. I find it supportive for myself and my clients for deeper understanding and healing. Thank you so much, Amelia, for saying that. So for everyone who has no access to bird data, I don't know why I wasn't thinking of that before, you can go down the route of psychic readings where you look for someone where your heart is opening, where you feel safe to connect to that person, because sometimes you connect to psychics and you're whole belly area goes like, oh, something is off. Just walk away and go to those where your heart feels nice and warm and nurtured in their presence. So you can go to people that can tap to the soul records of your being through the frequency field rather than studying astrology. And then keep what resonates and release the rest. Um Beverly, how do we find or a relocation chart on your website? It's uh, that is not on my website. You will just have to go on Google and look for relocation. Oh, relocation chart. Uh, the galacticastrochart.com software currently is not capable of doing correct calculation of relocation chart unless you manually enter the data for each planet from another software that gave you relocation chart data. That's when you. That's how you can do it. You change the houses and and all that. But if you just put your birth detail, there is no option currently for relocation chart. We continuously add new features, but right now it's not there yet. So, um, I think we are almost there. There are so many stars. How do you decide which ones to include? Do you focus on certain constellations? Great question, Thomas. And actually, it's why we are considering reducing the free version to 20 most common stars. Uh, the current um, inclusion of 64 stars is something I, I was guided to and I was working with for many years. So that's what we started with. And we just didn't... There's so much to do constantly in maintaining this um, this body of work that we just didn't get around to reducing it but i think uh, by the end of this year there may be only 20 on the free version just because of the sense of overwhelm that many people get when they 
when they suddenly see their chart full of stuff. So um, what some people are doing is, uh, you know, count how many uh, placements you have for each constellation and like manually write it out. It's something that we are working on as a software with, where the system will tell you that you have 11 alignments to Andromeda, 10 to Orion and so on. But right now you can manually do it and see uh, which star system is represented in your chart the most and start there. Or is there any star system that you feel some familiarity with, whether through seeing it around before or something is drawing you to it or like it kind of stands out, start there, you know. Be playful. There is no wrong way to approach it. Just let your own heart and your own curiosity and natural curiosity guide you and start there, you know. And we will never know it all. We'll never figure it all out. It's just, you know, puzzle pieces and uh, interesting journey that if you enjoy something like that, great. If it if you find it overwhelming, maybe it's okay to just let it be and let life guide you. Um Shannon, I love your site and have learned so much. I love the 64 stars. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, what is the best email to contact me? Info at galacticastrology.com. Info at galacticastrology.com. Thank you very much, Julia. This is valuable. Um, surely takes astrology to subtle new dimension. Ready to explore more. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, there is one hand raised. Renee, would you like to come on? Welcome. Hi, um, I seem to, uh, the, the video is blocked, um, so, but can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, my hand was raised. I put a question in the, um, in the chat as well, but I'm wondering, could you talk about uh, sidereal versus uh, tropical astrology? Um, and how that would affect um, the the galactic aspect of it. Um, since I've been doing in the last month a deep dive into sidereal, uh, it's blown my mind, literally. <laughs> um, my Saturn is now in Scorpio, and but everything makes so much sense for my astrology. And um, so now I'm kind of, I'm in your class, which I love, uh, and thank you so much for offering that. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just that's if you can help me help me process that information between the two, that would be amazing. Sure, I'm so glad you bring it up. Thank you so much, Renee. Um, our galacticastrochart.com calculator is by default um, set up with. Um, Placidus house system and tropical zodiac. Tropical zodiac is anchored in seasons, 12 archetypes defined by seasons. And then sidereal astrology is uh, the 12 archetypes that are defined by the stars in the background. The sidereal zodiac is precisely what we see on the sky. It reflects the true sky. Tropical zodiac doesn't reflect the true sky it because of the precession of the cycles it um you know it takes 26000 years before aries will um be again at 0 degrees on um the sun will conjunct aries 0 degrees on uh spring equinox but you know tropical zodiac intention was never to match the sky it was anchored in in the four seasons that we have on earth um the galactic astrology and the star placements, I actually considered the precession of stars and their movement across the sky. So actually, if you correctly calculate your tropical zodiac natal chart, your Vedic zodiac natal chart, and you would correctly calculate the stars, you will get exactly same stars placements in your Vedic as you are seeing on our website. So the... the Planets, placements, their houses, their zodiac signs may change, change. However, the stars will remain the same when it's correctly calculated. So what you will see through the website in terms of stars, 
there will be the exact placement aspect exact to the degree to the minute as you as you would see in your Vedic charts that the stars are correctly calculated uh, based on that. And it's up to you to explore what you resonate with more. What I'm noticing uh, when people comment on first exploring their tropical zodiac made so much sense to them to to long time. And then when they start exploring the Vedic, they feel even deeper resonance. It um, Someone recently mentioned that it feels like the Vedic is soul aligned and tropical is earth human everyday experience aligned. You know, I've worked with Tropical for all these many years and my focus was on everyday human experience, the trauma, the challenges, everything that was going on in deep psychology. And it was fascinating how accurate it was. These bo systems both work beautifully. They work perfectly and they each have different frequency, different essence um, that is important at different times of our life. So if Vedic now is calling you, go full go full on and and see where it takes you um but the stars i think the main message that i want to say here the stars that you see in our calculator are um, you, if it's if everything is correct, correctly recalculated it's exact same stars for both charts stars will not change does that well, help thank you. thank you thank you so much yes that very very assuring thank you <laughs> And uh, for anyone here, if you're looking for a galactic astrology practitioner to kind of help you delineate your chart, to understand your chart, and if you are into Vedic astrology, we have certified Vedic uh, galactic astrology soul reading practitioners on my website. Uh, if you t search for Vedic on the practitioners listing, you'll find a, a team of three in Hawaii uh, who are amazing, doing brilliant, brilliant work. They actually, the three of them work together. They each bring something unique to the table and they do offer fantastic readings. So you might enjoy them. Okay. So I think that concludes today's webinar. Thank yeah. you, Monica, for holding space. Thank you very much, Julia. I think all of us love it. I think it's a lot of good and new information for most of us. And in the name of MCDR, we thank you very, very much. First to you, then to all the people who attend to the conference. And I would like to remind everybody that this conference was given to all public for free. So you can know MCDR. And also the recording will be available for everybody for six months at the NCDR YouTube channel. So I will send you the link as soon as I have it and you can distribute it to the people or you can go directly to the NCR YouTube channel. In a few days, it will be there. Thank you very much, uh, Julia, and thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Much love to all. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. Bye-bye.